Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm honored to present another Death World Cycle Warlord Proxy match. At the bottom of our screen we have none other than Warmaster Sam Man himself playing as Vashelur, our fourth Chaos Faction Warlord that's going to be released in the Warp Unleashed. Uh, the sixth war pack of the aforementioned Death World cycle. We're going to be playing against Eric Keelback today, who's piloting the Swarm Lord. Uh, his choice of Synapse unit is going to be the Stalking Lictor. Both of our players are going to be keeping their opening hands, and given both of their predilection for playing as quickly as possible, uh, let's just note that our Tyranid player has the initiative token. Planet number one is going to be Elowith, which allows its victor to look at the top three cards and add one of those to his hand, and uh, assessing Sam's Warlord, it's first of all a 1-8, it's got area effect 1, and uh, while it's considered to be attacking, whether that's through an outright attack, or otherwise it's through uh, using its area effect 1, uh, if you kill an enemy army unit, then you end up uh, being able to generate a cultist token for your HQ. Sam lays down a copy of his signature event as his first deploy action, it's Demonic Incursion. It costs only one, and uh, this is going to allow Sam to look at the top six cards of his deck for a demon, reveal it, add it to his hand, and then put the remaining cards on the bottom of his deck in the order of his choice. In regard to what else Sam has at his disposal, he's got a copy of his signature support, which is going to be the Tower of Worship. It only costs one, but as a reaction, after you deploy a demon, you can put a cultist token into play in your HQ, Looks like Sam managed to find a copy of Possessed, uh, courtesy of the Demonic Incursion there. He's got to reveal it and then add it to his hand. So for the cost of 5, that's going to be a 9-4 with a command icon, and uh, considering that Sam ended up with a couple of copies of STC Fragment in his opening hand, he could lay that down for 1, which is going to bring him to f uh, 5 resources, and then he could use that uh, to play a Possessed for a Paltry 3, and if he's got a Tower of Worship out, uh, then he'll be able to do that for, uh, I suppose, well, he'll just generate a Cultist token in the process of doing that. So, for our Tyranid player at planet number 3, we've got a copy of Brood Warriors, the signature army unit. It's going to be Hive Mind Specialization, where every Termagant token gains a command icon. At planet number 4, we've got a Termagant Sentry. It's going to be a 1 command icon, 1, 2, and then planet number 5, we've got the 2 command icons for 2 resources is Toxic Venomthrope. The Swarm Lord, wherever it is commit, it's going to end up generating a 1-1 creature trait Termagant token at each adjacent planet, and then that Stalking Lictor is going to be able to uh, win command uh, at a planet for Eric. Planet number one is going to be the destination of this possessed here. Uh, looks like Sam decided to do a copy of Corrupted Teleportarium, which uh, is going to allow him to exhaust it to move an elite unit he controls from a blue planet to any other planet, and for that reason I would not be surprised to see Sam send his warlord to planet number one. Looks like that is not going to be the case. Um... I was just going to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see Sam send his warlord to planet number one and then relocate the possessed from planet number one to any planet just to harass uh, the swarm lord here. But it looks like Sam goes to planet number five with his warlord Vashilur. The swarm lord and the stalking lictor both go to planet number two, which is the move, a unit planet. The possessed is sitting here at planet number one. Note that there's termagant tokens at planets one and planet number three. The tyranid is going to win command on three separate planets and Sam is going to win command on two. So, Sam ends up winning two cards and two resources relative to the two cards and three resources for our Tyranid. Our Tyranid gets his signature support, uh, which we're probably not actually going to see. It's going to be a three cost after a unit with the Hive Mind specialization and cost three or lower is destroyed. You can exhaust the support uh, to put it into play from your discard pile exhausted at a planet. And then uh, just also bear in mind for Eric here, 
He's got a copy of Yumgarl Factor to boost an army unit's attack or HP, and he's also got a copy of Gene Stealer Harvesters for some fantastic command. Battle breaks out at planet number one. That's going to be the Termagant token wounding that copy of Possessed. We come to the end of a combat round after the Possessed destroys that unit, and then that is going to be that battle won by the Possessed. That's going to afford Sam the opportunity to look at the top three cards of his deck, add one of those to his hand of his choice. Swarm Lord is looking to win a battle at planet number two to move uh, one of these units. Um... Looks like there's a little bit of confusion at planet number one. Sam, unfortunately, cannot have his cake and eat it, too. He can't win uh, the battle here at planet number one and capture it and then uh, trigger his corrupted teleportarium to move the unit from that planet to, say, this planet where sits the Swarm Lord. Uh, unfortunately, like uh, White Blade says, there's no action between uh, winning the planet and capturing it and going to the HQ. Uh, so Sam kind of uh, does not luck out in that case, but uh, Sam does manage to come across a copy of Black Legion Heldrake, which is going to be an 8-8 flying unit uh, with STC Fragment. He's going to be able to play that for no more than 6, uh, which is absolutely superb. The Swarm Lord is going to be able to use Planum to likely save the Toxic Venom Thrope from being destroyed by Vashi Allure, uh, even though Sam is going to be able to trigger Farron to rout uh, one of the Swarm Lord's units. So just assessing Sam's hand, he's got a couple of copies of Chaos Fanatics. Note that that uh, Toxic Venom Thrope was indeed saved. Sam has another signature card. It's going to be his army unit, the Alluring Demonette. For the cost of three, it's a 3-2 with a command icon and a combat action, is you can sacrifice a cultist to move an enemy army unit at an adjacent planet to its planet. Uh, so you essentially vacuum the unit over. And whether that's pulling enemy combat units out of position or pulling enemy economy units to a planet where you're fighting a battle in order to just butcher them. It's a pretty interesting effect, and of course it counts as a demon, therefore it's, you know, eligible for uh, all sorts of cultist uh, token discard and whatnot, or sacrifice. We go through an HQ phase, that's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players. Our Tyranid gets a copy of Regeneration, which, go figure, regenerates units and adds to their HP. We also see a copy of Promotion for him, but much more interestingly, we see a copy of the signature attachment for our Chaos Faction Warlord. It is Predatory Instinct. For the cost of two, you affix it to a Chaos unit of any kind. It could even be a Black Legion Heldrake. The attached unit gains area effect one. You could play that on your Warlord, and if that is the case, then your Warlord is going to have... Uh, area effect 2. And of course, when Vashi Lure destroys an enemy army unit while it's attacking and area effect using that, you're considered to be attacking. Uh, that is going to be a great opportunity to uh, uh, kill an enemy unit in gain a resource token. So looks like Eric is looking out for Sam. Sam is, of course, playing with proxies here. Kugoth Plaguefather signature support costs two. This actually only costs one, uh, and Sam should indeed be thankful for Eric catching that mistake because STC fragment plus six resources could result in a Black Legion Heldrake being played. So will we see the Black Legion Heldrake? Are we going to see that at planet number one? Yes, we are, and that is going to be a complete nightmare for our Tyranid player because that is an 8-8 flying unit at Planum. And uh, Sam has already won a battle at the first planet that's going to be one blue technology icon in his victory display. Uh, if, you know, he wins the battle at Planum, and spoiler alert, something tells me he's going to be able to win that fight with an 8-8 flyer. Uh, all he's going to have to do is drop his Black Legion Heldrake wherever he'd like, uh, presumably, presumably to harass the Swarm Lord and uh, then he's going to be able to handily force the Swarm Lord to evacuate that planet, deny his opponent the opportunity to trigger a battle ability, so it's just going to be completely awful for Eric here. He calls out a hmm, and I think indeed Eric is finding himself quickly between a rock and a hard place because he is running out of options before he has any in the first place. A promotion is going to be affixed to the Toxic Venom Throw before command icons is indeed going to be greater than uh, 
three, and assessing Sam's hand, he's got another couple of devious tricks here. He's got a deep strike card. This is going to be the Prince's Might. You can uh, put it in reserve for the cost of one. You can deep strike it for one. And as a reaction, after you deep strike it, demon units at whatever planet you're, you know, putting, you're triggering that effect from... Your demon units cannot be damaged by units with cost 2 or lower until the end of the phase. For instance, this uh, Scything Hormigons with a Yumgarl factor attached, you can buff it to have attack value 50 if you'd like, but the Scything Hormigons are going to be woefully unable to potentially damage any of Sam's units. And uh, the Swarm Lord is currently sitting on 4 resources, so if he wants, he could buff the Scything Hormigons up to an attack value of 10. Uh, but Sam naturally has initiative at that planet. If we see the Swarm Lord go to that planet, then the Swarm Lord is going to risk being bloodied, and uh, I guess it slightly depends on how many resources the Swarm Lord ends up pulling in, uh, but at the moment, it looks like Whiteblade is going to be able to maybe buff his Scything Hormigons up to attack value 10, and then that's still going to be cut in half by uh, the Black Legion Heldrake's flying keyword. Plus, Sam has those two Prince's Might. They're going to be two shield value cards, and Sam also has a copy of Predatory Instinct, which is going to be a uh, three shield value card. So the Swarm Lord does unfortunately not have a copy of his signature event. Uh, so, like, first of all, he does not have an adequate number of Tyranids sitting upon this planet uh, to be able to result in uh, routing of this Black Legion Heldrake. He's got one, two, three, four Tyranids present. I believe he would need a number of Tyranids equal to the cost of that unit. Swarm Lord shows up at planet number one, so he's going to end up stealing initiative. If things are looking all the way bad for Sam, Sam is readily able to use Corrupted Teleportarium as an action to move his Black Legion Heldrake away from that planet, though it's looking unlikely that Sam would need to do that, uh, just because Sam might be able to use this opportunity to bloody the Swarm Lord unless the Swarm Lord retreats straight away because there's not going to be any more than regeneration preventing uh, Whiteblade from being destroyed, although I actually spoke too soon because Whiteblade had yet to win his command struggles. He comes across two cards and four resources, so let's see what is at his disposal. He's got two two-value shield cards. Only if he'd have gotten his three shield-value bone sabers would he have been able to survive this vicious onslaught here. That's going to be two cards, four resources for Whiteblade. He got another copy of Regeneration and a Virulent Spore Sacks, and instead for Sam. Sam gets a paltry one card and one resource. He's got this gleeful plague beast here. If Sam is going to be able to win the battle at this first planet, um, then I guess that is... Uh, going to go extraordinarily well for him. Sam could use the Corrupted Teleportarium to move his copy of Possessed to the first planet. It is going to be exhausted, but Sam might be able to kill off this copy of the Scything Hormigants. I guess something that we could see Whiteblade do, like Whiteblade's got nine resources. If he were to spend all nine of those, uh, he could essentially give his Scything Hormigants here uh, plus 18 attack, and then the Scything Hormigons would be at attack value 20, they'd be able to attack, uh, that would get cut in half to 10, uh, but it would be a sterling opportunity here for him to uh, kill the Black Legion Heldrake in a single swing, were it not for Sam uh, to be able to use Predatory Instinct as a shield card, but I would not be surprised uh, to see something happen like, uh, let's say Whiteblade invests a ton of resources in buffing his Scything Hormigants, and then it all comes down to, you know, like, let's say Whiteblade dumps eight or nine resources into this unit, and then Sam uses his Corrupted Teleportarium to move that unit. Uh, so I will be really curious. Yep, Whiteblade is going to be doing it again. He's going to add another uh, plus attack value marker here. So it's currently sitting at 6 attack value. Are we going to see it keep happening? Yes, we are. It's currently at 8 attack value. Uh, and isn't this going to be interesting? It's a bit of a shame that Sam isn't uh, allied with... Well, I guess I don't know if he's allied with Dark Eldar or not, but he does not have a sufficient number of resources uh, to use Archon's Terror if he had one. And uh, this is about to just get really ridiculous here. So Whiteblade continues to funnel resources into 
to the Scything Hormigons. It's currently going to be attack value 10, and I, uh, I wonder at what point Sam is going to either evacuate that planet or... Like, uh, here's, here's a thought. If we see the Black Legion Heldrake moved via the Corrupted Teleportarium away from planet number one to planet number two, then the Scything Hormigons even relocated by Planum to planet number two, then Sam is going to have the opportunity to swing first and kill the Scything Hormigons with his relocated Black Legion Heldrake, and, uh, if we see the Corrupted Teleportarium instead... Like, it would be a bad idea to move the Black Legion Heldrake anywhere but here. Uh, but we could see Sam win Karnath. We could also see Sam set up to win uh, planet number three, and that would be all the blue icons he needs uh, in order to be able to win this one. So Whiteblade continues to funnel resources into that Yumgarl factor to buff up his Scything Hormigant. It is currently going to be able to attack for 12. Uh, Whiteblade now delivers that attack... And here we go. Sorry, it's going to be a total of uh, attacking for, like, let's see here. Sam says for 10 or for 12. Yeah, so it is going to be a total of 12. Cut in half is going to be down to 6. Uh, Sam discards his signature attachment, so... 6 minus 3 is going to be a paltry 3, and now this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for the Black Legion Heldrake to eradicate the Scything Hormigons. All we're going to be seeing is the Swarm Lord with an opportunity to attack for a, a grand total of 1, thanks to flying, and that is going to be a whole lot of nothing, and that is looking like Whiteblade is about to get absolutely just wrecked. And uh, let us see, that Black Legion Heldrake is going to be able to take a return swing. That was a whole hell of a lot of resources all invested in this Scything Hormigant. It was two for the Hormigant, five resources for Yumgarl's Factor, for the Yumgarl Factor's effect, plus a card and a resource for Yumgarl Factor in the first place. And now it looks like White Blade is channeling uh, additional resources into buffing its HP, so a very interesting choice here. He does does two resources to give it plus four HP. And are we going to see additional resources poured into this unit? Uh, White Blade is going to have to, let's see here, if he were to do two additional resources, he's currently got his unit sitting at a total of eight hit points. And uh, I guess he could discard a copy of Regeneration to preserve its fragile viscera, and it's going to be a total of 8 HP, so is Sam going to use this opportunity to attempt to destroy the Scything Hormigants, or is he otherwise going to be swinging at the Swarm Lord? Yes, Sam is. That is going to be a bloodied Swarm Lord, and that is going to be a paltry 2-5, so things are looking very interesting indeed for Whiteblade. Uh, once we come to the end of a combat round, that could be as something as simple as this Black Legion Heldrake because it's not going to have initiative. We could see Corrupted Teleportarium move the Heldrake from planet number one to planet number two, and then, uh, presuming that Eric is going to end up winning command at this, or er, sorry, winning the battle at this planet, uh, that's going to be an opportunity for him to move his Scything Hormigant to planet number two. The Hormigant may have a, a chance to attempt to bloody Vashia Lure, uh, but the thing about that is uh, Sam has still got some two-value shield cards in his hand, so things are looking very interesting indeed. Whiteblade decides to stay with all of his units, and uh, I would imagine that Sam is going to be staying as well. Uh, looks like the Scything Hormigants are going to be able to attack for a massive... 12, and they do have 8 hit points right now, so this is just absolutely absurd. Uh, this is until the end of the phase. This Scything Hormigants has these ridiculous stats, so will we see Sam's Warlord bloodied as well? I suppose only time will tell. Is this Black Legion Heldrake going to be... Staying at the planet, like, I guess we've got to see Corrupted Teleportarium move it away from that planet, because otherwise this is just going to be a tremendously imposing effect, like... Sam can use the Prince's Might to protect him the following turn, but he can't release it this round. And, uh, like, if uh, the Scything Hormigants is relocated to this planet thanks to Planum, if the Black Legion Heldrake is moved to this planet thanks to the Corrupted Teleportarium, 
uh, Sam would have to use his first combat turn to retreat with his warlord, and it looks like that is going to be the Black Legion Heldrake outright destroyed. No, okay, so it's going to be attacking for 12, uh, cut in half to 6, and then cut by 2 is going to be 4 points of damage, so the Black Legion Heldrake is still alive, and now it's going to be able to return fire upon that Hormigons. And, uh, interestingly enough, I guess if we see the Scything Hormigond relocated to this planet, uh, that's going to be an opportunity for Sam to attack, uh, with his possessed. Like, uh, Scything Hormigons is going to be, if it were to be relocated to this planet here, uh, then that would be an opportunity for... So it'll be showing up exhausted, uh... Six, yeah, so, okay, yeah, I think Whiteblade is a little bit confused because someone doesn't know how to install proxy cards correctly, just to give my, my close friend Eric here a little bit of crap about this process, uh, so maybe that's all the more reason that you should have installed the image packs, Eric. Uh, the Black Legion Heldrake is going to be returning fire at that Scything Hormigon. What I was trying to say before is if we see the Black Legion Heldrake saved by by the Corrupted Teleportarium, really the best case scenario, well, it's not the best case scenario at all. If Eric were to relocate this unit to that planet, it would still be showing up exhausted because the Toxic Venomthrope and the Brood Warriors would be able to uh, protect, well, they would basically win the battle before this unit could ready, if it was dumped here, the uh, Termagant tokens would attack. Sam would likely be able to clear them out with his Warlord. Uh, Sam would have the initiative token... Uh, and then at the end of the combat round, the Possessed would ready, the Scything Hormigons would ready, Sam would be able to attack the grievously wounded Scything Hormigons for a total of, uh, seven. So it looks like we saw Sam discard a copy of the, let's see here, he discarded a copy of Prince's Might just to protect his, uh, Black Legion Heldrake, and, uh, that's a very interesting choice. I guess Sam wanted to make a difficult... Decision here for Eric. Sam decided to move his possessed from planet number two to planet number one. And, ah, uh, okay, I guess Sam is totally out of shield cards. And this is a little bit of a perplexing decision because the initiative still resides in the hands of Eric. So if Eric keeps his units at this planet, he's going to be able to attack with his Scything Hormigons. He's going to be able to kill one of these units, like the Possessed, outright, because Sam is out of beneficial effects. Then the uh, Black Legion Heldrake is going to be able to return fire and kill the Scything Hormigons. But then the Brood Warriors are going to be able to attack, and then that's going to be... I guess all of Sam's units dead, and that just seems like such a terrible waste uh, to me, so I'm not sure what exactly Sam was thinking. Perhaps there's some sort of card effect I was not thinking of. Uh, the Scything Hormigons takes an attack. It manages to kill the Black Legion Heldrake, and now this is going to be... Oh, well, okay, never mind. I guess I spoke... Well... God, what is Sam thinking? He attacks with his possessed uh, to kill this copy of Brood Warriors. Uh, and now I guess at the end of the combat round, is Sam going to be retreating? It just seems like that's such a, a perplexing decision here because the Toxic Venomthrope is going to be attacking. But we come to the end of the combat round and if Sam doesn't retreat, then... Uh, his possessed is going to be killed, and I am just absolutely bewildered by Sam's decision. He stays at that planet, and that's going to be Eric delivering an attack to the possessed. So I, yeah, the that unit is going to be outright killed, and I guess we've just got this Scything Hormigons with no more than a mere 1 HP, and I guess I really have no idea what Sam was thinking. It seems like he was just throwing away the life of his possessed there. Had he used his possessed to kill the Scything Hormigons, well, I guess either way, it would not have worked out well for Sam, but I would imagine Eric is going to be repositioning, yeah, the Scything Hormigons to that uh, other little planet there, and God, I guess Sam is just incredibly lucky that 
uh, Eric only has a one single shield value card in hand. Uh, we're going to be seeing a battle break out at this planet. This is going to be Sam, presumably using his area effect one uh, to destroy all of these units, although we might see regeneration discarded to protect the Scything Hormigons. Uh, but Sam is going to have a sterling opportunity here to... Um, well, I guess as soon as an army unit is destroyed, that's going to generate a cultist token uh, for him. So I don't know about Sam's play that last round here. Sam's currently only got one blue technology icon. That's going to be two dead uh, token units. And now let's see what happens here. Uh, no army units only. So... Uh, that is, you know, let's see, oh, Christ, I guess, uh, Eric has channeled an additional one resource into augmenting the HP here of the Scything Hormigons, and, uh, the Hormigons are sitting at 10 HP, Sam decides to retreat, and I really have no idea what Sam was thinking this last round. It looks like he went from having absolutely every chance to win this game to all of a sudden things look like an absolute nightmare uh, for him. So I don't know if Sam just like threw this game down the toilet. He calls that he misplayed it, and unfortunately it seems like that clearly is going to be the case. Uh, this is going to be Eric's opportunity now to use Karnath to trigger whatever battle ability he would like. Uh, it could be Iridial, and God, I guess, why not Iridial to pull eight points of damage off of this Scything Hormigant, and now the Scything Hormigant is going to be able to survive instead of dying at the end of combat. So I guess Hero Hormigant here is going to end up winning this one, and that just ended up being absolutely incredible. Uh, so as loath as I am to say it, that seems like that was a colossal misplay on Sam's part. And that was just, uh, you know, some incredibly efficient play on Eric's. And now the Swarm Lord is set up at each and every planet, save the new fifth planet, uh, to win command. We go through an HQ phase. That's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players here. Sam is going to be sitting at five resources and seven cards. Why? Blade instead is going to be at four resources and six cards. Uh, White Blade, if he wins planet number one and planet number two, that could easily be the game for him. That would put him at three blue icons. Or if he wins, uh, well, let's see here. I guess he would also need to start collecting red icons, but at this point it just seems like blue is easier. So do bear in mind planet number one is going to be Karnath, the wild card planet. Planet number five is going to be Barless, the forced random card discard planet. Sam did manage to draw a copy of Archon's Terror to remove... Um, the Scything Hormigant from, say, planet number one, he could end up winning that one pretty handily. Uh, I guess we see a Splintered Path Acolyte played to planet number four, which is going to be a perfect target for that Stalking Lictor to beat its command. And because Sam threw away both copies of the Prince's Might as shields, now we've got uh, regeneration on this Yumgarl factor possessing Scything Hormigant, which is a two or lower cost card. So we've only got one more copy of the Prince's Might in the entirety of Sam's deck. And now... Things are going to be a little bit difficult here for Sam. He sacrifices his copy of Splintered Path Acolyte. For some reason, it looks like he keeps putting cards on the bottom of his discard pile as opposed to the top, as people should. Uh, STC Fragment uh, with Splintered Path Acolyte, and I think a Cultist token was also sacrificed. That's going to be a... well, maybe not... Um, Anyways, whether the Gleeful Plague Beast was free or whether it was played uh, for one, there's now a Gleeful Plague Beast sitting atop this planet. It's going to be dealing a point of damage at the onset of the combat phase, and now I guess Eric is going to have to be pretty careful because his Swarm Lord is indeed bloodied. Uh, if Chaos does something not very well, it's being able to conjure up the ranged keyword, so if Eric is going to be able to prevent his Warlord from being assassinated, he might be able to win this one. His Warlord can 
can certainly win command for him, as can that stalking Lictor. And now I guess let's see what our two players decide to do. Eric has only got one resource left, and that's going to be critically important to consider purely for this Yumgarl factor. Sam's got two resources left, so he's presumably going to be able to win uh, the combat at planet number one. Sam may send his uh, his warlord to planet number two uh, to kill off the Termagant sentry and set himself up for his victory condition, or alternatively, Sam might go to planet number five to win a couple of cards, do that forced random card discard thing. Both of our players are currently deciding where exactly they want to send their respective warlords. Interestingly enough, Sam decides to go for planet number one. I'm not exactly sure what Sam is thinking going to that planet, because I guess, you know, like, he could have just used um, Archon's Terror to remove that planet, but maybe he's saving that for his victory condition planet. He's going to have initiative. The Stalking Lictor shows up at planet number one. Swarm Lord shows up at planet number three. So that's going to be a total of one card, one resource for Sam. He gets a copy of Turbulent Rift. After he deploys an elite, you deal a point of damage to your unit to deal one damage to all enemy units of that planet. And uh, Eric instead ended up winning two cards and three resources. So he got a copy of indescribable horror where he can route an army unit with printed cost equal or lower than the number of tyranid units he controls at a planet but at present it's only going to be two tyranids one tyranid there are no termagant tokens generated here uh but there's three tyranids at this planet so we'll have to see what the swarm lord manages to do at planet number one uh do note that gleeful plague beast is going to fire off that's going to be a damage dealt to all of these units the stalking lictor is here at this planet and uh i I guess what does Eric have? Eric has four resources, so it's looking like White Blade if he invests heavily. Okay, I kind of figured that Sam was going to give Eric an opportunity to uh throw away resources in his scything hormigant prior to using archon's terror i think that may have been a wise move because you'd you'd assume that eric would at least buff it one time to give it an attack value of four uh, which would have been the case for it to potentially kill the gleeful plague beast here uh, but the Synapse unit is killed. Sam is going to end up capturing planet number one. And what battle ability is he going to trigger? Is it going to be Barless? Is it going to be, uh, I guess, maybe Yavarn? Does he have any elites to put into play? I guess the answer is no. Uh, so what? is sam doing he's triggering oh okay yeah my mistake sam uses corrupted teleportarium to move his gleeful plague beast from a blue planet uh to this planet here and he's going to be using karnath to do what he could do a forced random card discard which probably wouldn't be the most useful thing in the world but it looks like he's doing it regardless what exactly is our tyranid going to end up randomly discarding what is it going to be? It's going to be Leviathan Hive Ship, and if ever there was a crusty signature card, it is unfortunately that one, so that is no loss whatsoever. Uh, for our Tyranid, much more egregious to lose would have been this copy of uh, Indescribable Horror. So let's see how things go. Looks like Sam is going to have a battle uh, taking place at planet number three, and the Swarm Lord is going to be fighting off this... Uh, a uh, copy of Chaos Fanatics. Uh, okay, so it looks like Sam is asking for a take back. So this is just a totally casual game as we're trying out this new warlord. Uh, so my sincerest apologies to you, dear viewers. Uh, but it looks like we're going to presumably do a little bit of a take back if Eric is indeed okay with it. Uh, really kind of a weird situation, but be that as it may, uh, looks like Sam is going to relocate, uh, his Gleeful Plague Beast to there. So I'm going to say, uh, total gentleman move, Eric, you are among the most <laughs> honorable of us all. So very dorky, uh, but that is totally fine there. Uh, so it looks like Corrupted Teleportarium is going okay. So I guess that is not that big of a deal. I 
thought for a moment uh, that we were going to be taking back the activation of Barless, but instead it's going to be Corrupted Teleportarium uh, moving the Gleeful Plague Beast to this planet. So we'll have to see if the Swarm Lord is going to be able to kill off this copy of Gleeful Plague Beast or not. It's already got a point of damage. Sam, unfortunately, does not have any shields at his disposal. And my sincerest apologies, dear viewers, for the just goofiness of that play. And let's see if this ends up being another giant misplay, unfortunately, on Sam's part. It's going to be three, well, two points of damage dealt to the Gleeful Plague Beast. It's going to be at uh, three damage. That's two HP remaining. The Termagant Sentry is going to be able to damage it. And Sam doesn't have any shield cards in hand, so I guess once again, I'm not sure what exactly Sam is thinking, because the Swarm Lord has initiative, it's going to be able to hang out at that planet, and uh, the Swarm Lord is going to be able to finish off that copy of Gleeful Plague Beast, which is currently exhausted. So that copy of Chaos Fanatics deals a point of damage to the Swarm Lord, and god, I've just got to say, I do not understand what Sam is doing tonight. Ah, uh, but he uh, is certainly painting out our new warlord to be a little bit perplexing here. So the Gleeful Plague Beast, I guess, is going to be staying at that planet? Eric decides to stay, Sam decides to stay, and again, I am just mystified by Sam's decision-making here. So the Swarm Lord ends up killing that copy of Gleeful Plague Beast, I hope, for Sam's sake it was worth being able to get in an additional swing of one, uh, because the Chaos Fanatics are going to be able to take a pot shot at the Swarm Lord. Um, White Blade still got two one-value shield cards in hand. I don't know if we're going to be seeing those or not. And uh, I guess Sam had better hope to high hell that he ends up coming across some sort of powerful elite. Um, like, I guess... Sam, if he sends his warlord, like, Sam has got two blue technology icons, so if he sends his warlord to this planet, the swarm lord also has to show up at that planet uh, to win with the scything, like, the scything hormigons need to show up at this planet. The only way that's going to happen is if the swarm lord delivers them there. Sam is naturally going to have initiative, so if Sam gets some sort of really powerful demon, then that's going to work out great for him, because he might be able to assassinate, destroy the swarm lord, but if that's not the case, then things are just going to go exceptionally poorly for Sam. Eric has currently got eight resources, uh, with which to use that Yumgarl factor, and Sam unfortunately does not have uh, the prince's might which would result in basically like an auto win uh, we're going to be seeing the Colosseum fighters used and this is going to be kind of annoying I guess maybe okay maybe well I don't know what is up with this card just showing at the top of Sam's discard pile. I guess the most recent thing he threw away was going to be a copy of the Prince's Might. Uh, so Sam is going to be able to bounce the Prince's Might back to his hand. Thanks to the Coliseum Fighters being played at planet number one, that's going to be a deep strike card that Sam can put in reserve at planet number one for the cost of one. Then he can deep strike it for the cost of one, and then all of his demon units are going to be undamageable by units with printed cost uh, 2 or lower. That includes Scything Hormigons, so what exactly are we going to be seeing here? The Swarm Lord is fresh out of units that cost uh, more than two, so the Swarm Lord, it's looking like he's going to be able to... He's dropped the Gene Stealer Harvesters uh, at this planet here they're at an infested planet so they gain plus one card plus one resource but it's all gonna be up to uh you know sam like man oh man i guess white blade can dig and dig and dig for as much as he wants but unless he somehow has a unit to deploy at this planet uh that is gonna be the game here so i mean inexplicable just bizarre play on sam's part uh i guess it is oh what is it, it it's a tuesday night so i can't imagine sam's had any drinks or anything like that uh eric laments the fact that he suddenly realizes that the opposite warlord is indeed 
indeed going to be a demon. We've got this card sitting here in reserve at the first planet. Uh, Eric calls out Run DMC style that it's time to get tricky, uh, but unfortunately, uh, he's not going to be able to be tricky enough to end up winning the battle at this planet. Uh, Sam has only got two resources remaining, uh, but, you know, let's see what happens here. Sam is going to be able to single-handedly probably win the battle at this planet, as unfortunate as it is to say it, um, unless... There's some, like, master stroke, and the Swarm Lord ends up just accruing an ungodly amount of shield cards, because Sam is gonna really have no more than just his Warlord fighting at that planet, so... You know, the Swarm Lord is sitting here at 4 HP. It's going to be able to attack for 2. Sam doesn't really have much in the way of shields. In fact, he doesn't have anything in the way of shields. Uh, but the Swarm Lord is going to be able to hang out at that planet fighting Tooth and Claw. And I guess if uh, Eric manages to get enough shield cards, that is going to be uh, Vashilur bloodied. And then that is going to result in Sam winning at that planet. Virulent Spore Sacks. Like, let's see here. The Prince's Might is, I believe it is, uh, whoops, I'm looking at the wrong player's discard pile. So let me go ahead and take a look at Sam's discard pile. So the Prince's Might is it uh, cannot be damaged by units. So Virulent Spore Sacks is not going to be able to damage... Um, Vashia Lure, both players of course send their warlords to the first planet that's going to be command one on each and every planet by Eric and if he wins a large volume of shield cards then the swarm lord is going to be able to uh, win him that battle hands down he's got two toxic venomthropes in play, he's got uh, gene stealer harvesters in play uh, and it looks like, uh, that is just going to be an incredible amount of command won by Eric, and it looks like right there, he got a copy of Predation, Yumgarl Factor, and Indescribable Horror. Sam does not have any cards, so Sam is going to be able to attack multiple times with his Warlord, uh, even after deep striking the Prince's Might, but Sam is going to be able to use Area Effect 1, uh, he's going to be able to, um... Like, hit the Swarm Lord. The Swarm Lord can block one, two, three, four, five, six instances of damage, uh, but Vashia Lure is only going to be able to take four swings before being bloodied, and Sam does not have any shield cards whatsoever. So, even though things look grim for Eric, he is quite handily going to end up winning the battle at this planet. I'm not sure if it's the case or not, but I can only hope uh, that this planet here was infested by prior to the Gene Stealer Harvester's winning command at an infested planet, because, like, the Venomthrope infests a planet after you win command, so that would be after the Gene Stealer Harvesters have the opportunity to gain their additional card and resource from that command struggle, uh, so hopefully everything is, uh, you know, cool at that planet. We did happen to see the Prince's Might, uh, disc, or, sorry, Deep Striked, and uh, that virulent spore sax has blown up. Coliseum Fighters is going to have an opportunity to take a single swing at the Swarm Lord, uh, but unfortunately, it is not going to be enough here. So Termagant Sentry takes a swing. That's going to be the uh, Coliseum Fighters killed. We've already agreed that Vashilur is going to be no more than a paltry 1-6 Warlord when he's flipped to his bloodied side. We don't know. It's uh, possible that he's like a 1-5. I don't think he's going to be becoming a 2-5. And it looks like our players are cutting to the chase. Here Sam is going to be using Area Effect 1. Uh, I'm not sure why Regeneration is exhausted. Uh, I'm going to say I don't think Regen should be exhausted should it question mark uh, so area effect one is going to resolve the swarm lord is going to attack uh, that should be two points of damage on Vashia lure uh, yeah so SL swings for two pardon my typo so Vashilur is sitting at 3 points of damage, 5 HP remaining, and uh, how many more attacks can Eric block? It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 attacks that Eric can block, and you know, it's not like the Swarm Lord has no hit points, it's still got a Reservoir of uh, 4, so that would be Sam having to area effect attack, 
uh, what was it, eight times to be able to kill the Swarm Lord, and unfortunately that is not going to be the case. That's going to be a dead copy of Termagant Sentry. We may as well see a regeneration used uh, to pull two points of damage off of this base to four Scything Hormigant. Uh, looks like that is indeed what we're seeing right now. White Blade pulls two points of damage off of his Scything Hormigant. The Swarm Lord is again shielded by a copy of Predation being discovered discarded and uh, that's going to be two more points of damage on Vashi Allure and man it looked like Sam totally had this in the bag but things are going all the way bad now Sam does decide to retreat the prince's might is going to be sitting at the top of Sam's discard pile unless for some inexplicable reason this demonic incursion just keeps staying at the top of Sam's discard pile looks like Eric does a fair bit of gloating over his victory at the first planet that is going to be his opportunity to trigger Yvarn should he choose to do so so I would uh, suggest against it, given Sam's having run a large volume of elite units. Yeah, looks like uh, Eric is playing it safe, not triggering that battle ability. And now Eric is going to have to do is, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to win the game on this next round. He's going to have to at least play to Iridial to end up winning the game here. What exactly did Sam get at his disposal? If anything, we go through another HQ phase. That's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players. Sam gets another copy of Demonic Incursion to search for a demon of the six cards of his deck. He's got a copy of Zave's Split Tongue, which could have been great in conjunction with, say, the Prince's Might and Vashilur himself. A lot of uh, units being destroyed, a lot of cultist tokens being generated by Zaves and by Vashilur himself. Uh, but what exactly are we going to be seeing? Whiteblade knows that Sam has got two of his copies of the Prince's Might in the discard pile. That's going to be a copy of Demonic Incursion at the top of Sam's discard pile. So now he's not going to be able to use Colosseum Fighters to return the prince's might to his hand again. It looks like Whiteblade is quite handily going to end up winning uh, the battle at planet number one. Ooh, Eric has laid down a copy of Volatile Pyrovore at planet number two. He's likely, uh, well, first of all, that's a three-cost unit, so it's going to be able to beat the shit out of Vashi Allure, and now it's going to be up to Sam. Oh my god. So Sam drew a copy of Frenzied Bloodthirster, uh, but Sam has, he can reduce the cost to eight from his STC fragment, and he can reduce the cost to 7 from his cultist, so it looks like this is going to be able to help him fight during the presumable last battle of the game here at Iridial. Uh, but yeah, man, things are looking a little bit tricky for Whiteblade, and uh, the Frenzied Bloodthirster is great in a sense if you can get it into play, but it's certainly by no means immune to being swarmed down by, say, Ripper Swarm, Brood Warriors, this Scything Hormigant uh, that's still got that Yumgarl factor. We've got another copy of Brood Warriors at that planet, and... Uh I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, Whiteblade still has two uh, different two-value shield cards in his hand, and uh, I guess let us wait and see. So both of our players have decided where to send their warlords. Uh, Sam is going to be going to planet number one. If Sam wins that planet, uh, he's not actually going to be able to... Like, all he can really do is just do something like route this volatile pyrovore. He's not going to be able to win the game on that planet. So Sam showed up at planet number one. He's going to win a couple of resources for himself, which is going to be good because it'll potentially allow him to fund the Frenzied Bloodthirster and something else. Uh, looks like Eric is deciding to pull resources from his Venomthropes. Eric gets a total of four cards and one resource. He got a copy of Termagant Horde, which could be a complete nightmare against uh, the Frenzied Bloodthirster, because Termagant Token still can hit a Bloodthirster even with flying uh, for the cost of one. Interestingly enough, Sam decides to retreat from the first planet. Looks like he's not deciding to risk it, and... Uh he doesn't want to have any of his, uh, you know, any additional damage on his warlord is what I'm trying to say. Even though Sam would uh, be able to, well, I guess he doesn't have any shield cards, so I suppose it's right for Sam to run. Uh, looks like that cultist token is going to be handily destroyed by that termagant sentry. That's going to be no battle ability. Uh, able to be activated there by Eric. Now Eric is going to be able to use Barless's forced random card discard. That's going to be the signature army unit, the alluring demonette.
get uh, discarded from Sam's hand. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he was not lucky enough to get a copy of Frenzied Bloodthirster, but at the very least, it's looking like Sam is going to be able to go out with a bit of a bang. Uh, I don't think that Eric is going to be able to uh, get enough... Um, like, indescribable horror is a tactic, it's not a power, so the frenzied bloodthirster's not immune to it. Uh, I don't think Eric is going to be able to get a total of 10 Tyranid units at this planet to be able to use indescribable horror to rout uh, the frenzied bloodthirster, but I suppose we'll have to see. Sam, well, both of our players have gotten four resources and two cards. Sam drops a promise of glory into play. Uh, pretty fantastic time for that. Sam got a copy of Master Warpsmith again. Absolutely superb timing for that. Sam can spend four resources to put this into play. He's going to be at six, uh, but then he's going to be able to use both of his cultist tokens uh, each for two, and then that is going to put him at a ten resources. And after he plays a demon, that'll allow him to generate a cultist token, and uh, that'll be something else made by his bloodthirster. Or Sam could just use the STC fragment and uh, preserve one of his cultist tokens. So let's see. The initiative is likely to be in Sam's possession, because Sam is probably going to be sending his warlord to planet number one to uh, do area effect, if at all possible. He'll have initiative. He'll uh, undoubtedly manage to kill a unit like a token or something with area effect one um, or like the ripper swarm maybe and then that's going to be the frenzied bloodthirster it's going to have its bloodthirst activated it'll gain armor bane brutal and flying oh there we go that is going to be turbulent rift so that is going to be cool that's going to be a lot of damage dealt to our tyranid units that's going to be a copy of brood warriors with a yumgarl factor it's going to be a copy of termagant horde at that planet and this is going to be uh, five Tyranids thus far. The Swarm Lord, I can only imagine, is going to be sending himself to planet number two. I would imagine that our Tyranid is going to be able to quite handily win this battle at planet number one. So, Sam discards two cultists and the STC fragment. That's going to decrease the cost by six. It's going to only cost a total of four, and that's going to uh, be triggering Turbulent Rift to deal one point of damage to each enemy unit at that planet. Uh, that's going to be that Ripper Swarm, presumably killed, and that's going to make it a little bit more difficult for this Bloodthirst to trigger during combat if the Ripper Swarm dies now, unless we maybe see the Master Warpsmith uh, attack later, uh, but Whiteblade has got four resources. That's going to be enough for him to use Indescribable Horror to remove the Master Warpsmith from that planet, and uh, I guess I'm just very curious to see how combat ends up resolving here. We've got a copy of Bone Sabers in Eric's hand. We've got another two-value shield card. We've got uh, four one-value shield cards, and the Frenzied Bloodthirster here, the instant that a unit uh, dies dies during a combat round it gets uh, armor bane brutal and flying so it's going to gain a point of attack for every point of damage on it currently that's just one it's going to be able to ignore shields and then it's also going to be able to fly so it's going to become all the more difficult to destroy it looks like Sam is going to be out of opportunities to put units into play uh, because he's just down to one resource. No, I guess I actually spoke too soon. Sam could use a cultist and his one remaining resource to do Zave's split tongue at planet number one, and uh, he may pose a bit of a fight for our Tyranid player after all. I think it would be absolutely incredible if Sam ends up winning this one at the very last moment, but uh, uh, something tells me that that may be relatively unlikely. Uh, Eric is still sitting on four resources. He's looking like he's going to be able to win uh, a total of two cards and a resource, and then probably another resource from his Toxic Venom Thrope, uh, and he'll be able to use that effect to beef up one of these units with Yumgarl Factor on it, like his Brood Warriors or his Volatile Pyrovore. I'll just be very curious to see how things go. Uh, I can only imagine it's going to be that copy of... Uh, what is it going to be? It's going to be Indescribable Horror, removing the Master Warpsmith. 
So let me see. We've got virulent spore sacs at this planet number one, unless that was an accidental uh, misplay. And what exactly is Eric doing here? He says he needs that to win my bad. So maybe he's going to take back this play of the virulent spore sacs. Uh, okay, no, never mind. So looks like we've got virulent spore sacs sitting at this planet. Is Sam going to do Zave's split tongue or is he otherwise going to just be sitting on these resources and they're going to be doing nothing? Uh, so Sam said BRB a moment ago, so why don't I just go ahead and pause the video in case Sam does happen to uh, BAFK. All right, so Sam indicates that he is done. I can only imagine that he is passing. Uh, I guess, like, there's not going to be any opportunity for Sam to win resources at planet number one, so I'm not exactly sure what Sam is holding off on. I think if it were me, I'd use my cultist token, uh, which, you know, does double duty. Or, no, I'm sorry, Master Warpsmith only discounts elites, not uh, units like Zave's Split Tongue, so my sincere apologies for misspeaking earlier uh there are a few different effects to keep track of i say as if that were any excuse i'm the hive tyrant i'm not supposed to make mistakes uh to no one's surprise sam shows up at planet number one swarm lord shows up at planet number two so he's not going to be obliterated uh by a frenzied bloodthirster here so let's see that's going to be one card at planet number one drawn by sam he gets a copy of black legion Heldrake, which is unfortunately not going to be doing anything for him uh, looks like the Swarm Lord is going to end up getting two cards, well, sorry, four cards, two resources, and then uh, both Venom Thropes there are going to generate him an additional resource. The Swarm Lord only has 13 cards remaining in his deck. Sam has got 25 cards remaining in his deck. Man, the Tyranid economy is just uh, rather strong indeed, so I'll be really curious to see how Battle at Planet Number 1 goes... Uh, because whichever player ends up winning this battle, that is going to be the game right here. So unfortunately for our tyranny, he's got a lot of reasonably powerful combat units over at planet number two. But we've got a battle occurring at the first planet. I'm just going to go ahead and click on our Tyranid player's hand uh, because he's the one with the shield cards and whatnot. Sam doesn't have anything uh, that remains relevant to combat. Uh, and what exactly is occurring here? So we are seeing a cultist being destroyed by something. Uh, why is that taking damage? Um, what was that damage from? I'm just going to go ahead and ask. I will say, uh, what was damage from? Question mark. Uh, just because the cultist token is gone. It says the Master Warpsmith took damage, the Frenzied Bloodthirster, and then Sam's Warlord as well. Oh, right, the Spore Sacks. Oh, right, my bad. Okay, so the Virulent Spore Sacks was destroyed. It killed that cultist token, and the Frenzied Bloodthirster is now going to be activated. We've got a Termagant token generated by the Termagant Horde. Indescribable Horror is going to be removing the Master Warpsmith from that planet, and now it's going to be Sam's opportunity to, I presume, use Area Effect 1, uh, or he could use his Frenzied Bloodthirster to try to remove uh, one of the units from this planet, but um, I guess, you know, Sam may as well use his Area Effect 1 now, because he kind of has to act or otherwise forever hold his peace. Sam indicates that he has got a question, does Bloodthirst reset every combat round? The answer is yeah. The answer is yeah. So during a combat round in which one or more units have been destroyed, yep, so it resets each and every combat round, which is going to quickly make this absolutely impossible for Sam to win this conflict, but it's going to be Sam's opportunity at the very least to use Area Effect 1, kill the Termagant token, wound the Horde, wound the Warriors, in fact, 
mm, potentially kill the warriors unless we see uh, Eric drop a resource onto them and preserve them. Uh, Eric says, I think so too. Uh, and of course, Sam knows full well that he doesn't have any shield cards in hand, so he's operating with all the information. Uh, at hand, but I suppose let's finish playing this one out. Really bizarre play from my dear friend Sam Man at the beginning of this game. I don't know if it cost Sam the game, but something tells me that it probably cost Sam Man the game. So let's just see it play out. Sam, if you would do the honor, please exhaust thy warlord. Use Vashia Lure to deliver area effect one, or otherwise, I suppose you could use the frenzied bloodthirster to annihilate this volatile pyrovore or something like that. And of course, uh, Sam is uh, writing here in the chat log. Yeah, so he's kind of lamenting what he did earlier. Uh, Sam is going to be using his frenzied bloodthirster to attack the brood warriors, which I suppose is as good an option as is anything else. The frenzied bloodthirster does swing for armor bane 10 so it's at least got that going for it it manages to quite handily deal the one hit point worth of damage required to destroy uh, the brood warriors and gee it's almost as if that's a fantastic example of why you should not use 10 cost units in a normal deck uh, sam's got this bizarre cultist token thing going and of course the frenzied bloodthirster could have worked out fantastically well for him uh, but unfortunately um you know, it, it kind of... It presents a weird situation here where Vashia Lure is specifically geared toward running really powerful Chaos Elites. So I think Sam could have easily gotten away with that, but uh, there were a couple really questionable plays on his part uh, that just uh, ended up making things go really, really poorly for him. The Volatile Pyrovore is going to be attacking for 11. Cut in half is going to be 5.5, rounded up to 6. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I will say one more point of damage uh so yeah one two three four five uh because yeah eight eleven uh five point five rounded up to six uh should be a total of eight damage and that is going to be a dead frenzied bloodthirster uh so yeah unfortunately oh how the noble have fallen there we go, Sam calls it out, finally that is going to be the GG, so Sam is going to be resolving his area effect, but uh, Eric drops down all those shields, and that is going to be the game right there, so GG, well played, congratulations to Eric Keelback for managing to win this one, uh, Sam playfully throws out an FU to our good friend Eric K, but uh, looks like Vash Yalur unfortunately kind of shits the bed on this one, and uh, Sam does not manage to uh, pilot our newest Chaos Warlord spoiled in the Death World cycle uh, to victory here. So a bit of a crushing loss for Sam. Do note that uh, Vashilur is not actually going to be released until the final pack of the Death World cycle, uh, the Warp Unleashed. So between now and pack number six, I'm sure that our Chaos faction is going to get a great many uh, fantastic new toys, cards, and just instruments of... Uh, chaos and insanity and torture and uh, depravity with which to potentially annihilate a rather uh, economically established swarm lord. So that was a fascinating game. Very well played by Eric Keelback and shame on you, Sam, for making some uh, uh, very serious rookie mistakes. So I look forward to talking about this game on the Tyrant Cast. My dear viewers, I hope you enjoyed at least some aspect of this video. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. One last congratulations Congratulations to Eric. Thank you to both of our players for affording me this opportunity to record another Death World Warlord proxy match. But if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. Or if you are already subscribed, as ever, you're encouraged to share this content. Because the more engagement these videos receive, the more viewers may give Conquest a try. They might join our community. Fantasy Flight Games pulls in more dollars and they pour more funds into the development and continued support of Conquest LCG. 
If you ever want to get in touch with me, I would definitely encourage you to do so on Facebook or on Twitter, and if at any point you feel so courteous, so kind and generous as to want to make a small donation to my Patreon page, help keep this channel alive by kicking a dollar or two on a strictly monthly basis to your boy, the Hive Tyrant. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and once again, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.